Okay, so if you're still watching at this point, I assume uh, you've found something interesting in the content so far. Um, so obviously we will be replacing um, the pads and discs on the rear. Um, and if I get chance, I will actually try and film that um, and put a bit more detail on the handbrake adjustment. Um, there are lots of great how-tos for the smaller size rear discs, auto dock people like that. I've got some very good tutorials, um, but I haven't been able to find one for the integrated uh, drum and discs. So I'll have a look at that. But so that was just a quick walkthrough of the sort of standard components of uh, the VW T32 variant of the transporter and why we found it um, suitable for our camping requirements. Um, but there is an old adage that the uh, weakest component of any vehicle is the nut holding the steering wheel. Um, and Volkswagen commercial vehicles actually published some research back in 2019 um, on braking distances. And so just reading from that, um, they said that van drivers are risking accidents by failing to leave enough distance to stop. And they went on to establish through their research that over half of van drivers um, didn't know how heavy loads impacted braking distances. And so they took a selection of their vans, including the transporter, um, away to uh, Myra Proving Ground and did some, uh, they put a 500 kilogram load in the back and then did some brake testing. And they established that uh, braking distances increased by up to 36%. And so what that equates to in real terms is from 60 miles an hour, that was an increase of five meters in stopping distance. So that's the length of this van, an additional van length in your stopping distance when you've got that load on board and from 30 miles an hour it equated to an additional two meters so almost half a van length of additional stopping distance when you're carrying a heavy load um, and so this um, this research prompted the then director of uh, Volkswagen commercial vehicles to be quoted as saying whether they're plumbers landscape gardeners or construction workers, our customers regularly carry half a ton of equipment and need to be aware, in bold, they need to adjust their driving style to avoid having a costly and potentially serious accident. And so I, I think that uh, consumer directed message um, is equally um, valid to us as camper vanners. Um, as we've said in uh, our previous video, this particular van has six belted seats in addition to the driver's seat. Um, and so that's fine if you're carrying six lads from the under nines football team. Um, but if you've got six of me in those seats, that's 600 kilograms in its own right. Um, excluding the rib bed and the kitchen sink that we're already carrying here. So it's something um, we need to be very aware of. And so when we do our powdery checks, we get all very excited about the component specifications and specking up our van with the best bits of kit and the best rubber, which is all very important, but it's very easy to overlook the you of um, powdery, namely you the driver, and upgrading your skills uh, to, the, to, the, to the vehicle that you're driving, getting an understanding of that. Um, and so it's important to understand that whatever brakes we've got, as we've talked about previously, the standard brakes on um, the front of this van, the 308 mil discs, are more than capable of being gripped to a point by the caliper that will induce a lockup or trigger the ABS. So once that minimum lock has been achieved, it makes no difference how big your discs are. It makes no difference at all. Once it's locked, the wheel has locked, um, the baton is then passed to the tyres, um, literally where the rubber meets the road and is dragged along the surface. That is then going to determine how long it takes you to stop, whether the road is wet, whether the surface is, is grippy or high adhesion tarmac, those type of factors. Um, so the key thing really is not getting into that situation in the first place and ensuring that our observation um, and planning and forward planning skills are up to scratch. Now, as a day job, I coach 17, 18 year olds on how to drive. I'm not in vans, just in conventional cars. Um, but when they pass their driving tests, I leave them with three simple habits. Um, I'll put, a, put a, an image of that up on screen now. And it's largely derived from the Highway Codes Rule 126, which states that we should drive at a speed that will allow us to stop well within the distance 
we can see to be clear. We can only see if we're looking. So um, pulling those together in those three, three simple habits is a pretty good, um, pretty good approach and one of the sort of simplest rules in the highway code to guide us as, a, as an overarching guiding principle. And so the two, two second rule, which is derived from um, highway code rule 126, the two second rule in terms of say following distance um, should clearly be extended if we have a heavier van. Um, and equally that two second rule is a minimum, for the best of times it's a minimum of two seconds um, extended if the weather conditions are wet and doubled. So we should be looking for a two or four second gap extending both of those due to the increased uh, weight that we're carrying in the van. So just a thought provoking piece of research there from uh, VW Commercial Vehicles. Um, and I guess that segues nicely with the next topic we're going to come on to talk about, that of engine remapping. Rises to national. So I think the official 0-60 to 60 time is something like 16 and a half seconds. We probably won't be achieving that uh, today, but we're already up to sort of 50 miles an hour without really uh, straining the engine. Pulling up from 60 miles an hour in a 3.2 ton van. Checking the mirrors as we move off. Okay, so if your primary motivation for remapping your van is to increase the speed at which it can travel, um, a prudent starting point would be to establish uh, just exactly what the legal speed limits are for your specific van. Now, this is a subject that will cause more controversy and debate on the internet than whether or not a Kenneth and Norman panel air filter will actually increase the performance of your van. So it is a somewhat confused area um, though there are a number of people now who have done real due diligence on this subject area to the point of uh, having discussions with the chief constable of roads policing type characters um, and really got it now to a level of detail. Um, but you do need to overlay their knowledge with the very specific um, uh, criteria of your, your own van. So if we look at my V5 as an example, um, my T32 van is now registered as a motor caravan um, and it has a mass in service weight of 2121 kilograms. So my understanding of that would be that that falls below the 3.05 weight limit and my reading of the rules would be therefore that I am legally allowed to drive this van um, to the speed limits that I would a normal car. So that's my understanding of that. But as I say, this is very specific. This is a high top van, not a pop top. Um, so don't just overlay my information. You need to check your own V5 and the rules specifically. So that would be a, a really sensible starting point before looking at remapping, I would suggest. So this is quite a challenging um, area to join a multi-lane. So the uh, cattle grid here, we're leaving the forest. Dual carriageway ahead.
sliding traffic. Clearly with this much mass, it's advisable to uh, observe the two seconds plus rule. There's another long wheelbase that's just past us. Cruising at the moment at 60, being a window van, the permitted speed for a camper van, a registered uh, motorhome, would be 70 miles an hour for this stretch, as it has the solid centre divide of a dual carriageway. Just moving out, we've got the uh, brake lights on from the turn vehicle. And then we're going to be joining the M27 motorway uh, by lane gain. Now if you can do uh, 70 miles an hour on the M27, at the best of times you're doing quite well, whatever car you're driving uh, with the congestion we get, but today it's looking pretty uh, pretty good, pretty free flowing. So we'll now explore what a couple of junctions at 70 feel like and sound like in the van. So according to my speedo, that is bang on 70. We remain in lane two because I've got some slower moving vehicles lane one, which I'm still gaining on gain the third lane as it becomes the M27. criticisms of the high tops is it being quite slab sided you're exposed to crosswinds um, and most of the areas here as you can see we've got nice tree line tree lining in the forest area particularly um, of the motorways so where we tend to drive I haven't found it uh, on some of the more exposed European roads yet granted you will have to hold your steering wheel a little bit more firmly and be aware of what's going on aware of your vehicle um, but I haven't found it a significant an issue as some people uh, presented to be when uh, criticising the high tops. Okay, so the engine in this van is the 1.9 TDI PD, so it's the direct fuel injection um, engine, 
and that makes um, 102 PS and 250 Newton meters of torque. And as we said, for the type of driving we do and where we do our driving, predominantly flat areas, uh, we've never felt the need uh, to remap that engine. So it is in factory tune. Um, and we put a couple of videos of, of us um, driving that van so you can get a benchmark of what factory tune looks like. Um, and as I say, for the type of driving we do, it's, it's adequate. Um, there are some limitations and some slight frustrations as we observe in the, in the driving videos. So you don't have that reserve of power. Um, so in some situations when you're heavily loaded and you, you are going up a hill, you don't dictate or choose the speed at which you go up that hill. Um, the van will go at its own, its own pace. Um, though it's never been to the point where I feel we are being a nuisance and holding up other road users. Um, so we can generally get on with it, but it won't always be at the speed you would choose to be traveling at. And the only other scenario which um, can cause frustration would be um, when you're ex exiting at a roundabout, so joining a multi-lane from um, a roundabout. So you exit into uh, lane one and the road ahead is clear. Now you're accelerating as briskly as you can, um, but you've got to remember, I think the 0 to 60 time on this is something like 18 and a half seconds. So uh, however hard you're pedaling, um, a smaller car will be out accelerating you, but often what you'll get is a car driver will pass you the slow moving van, tuck back in without giving you a two second gap, so box you in and then proceed to travel at 55 miles an hour when perhaps you were on your way to 70. So you then got to back up. And so it does cause a degree of frustration there. Um, but in those scenarios, I've learned to remap my head um, and I'm generally in holiday mode when I'm driving this thing, so I'm not in a particular hurry. Um, and so just to accept that is one of the limitations um, for carrying a kitchen sink with you when you travel. <clears throat> um, so as I say, I can't give you any specific feedback on, on this engine. Um, my thoughts, my generic thoughts and observations would be if the engine you have is one that is um, put into different states of tune, so the same, exactly the same engine is sold in different states of tune, then remapping from the lower state of tune to the higher state of tune may well be uh, a good thing to explore. Um, if you are going beyond the upper limits of what Volkswagen or the manufacturer put out, um, you then need to consider other components of the van in more detail. So in this one, um, the five-speed gearbox, for example, would have limitations of torque that can go through it. Similarly, the clutch and dual mass flywheel. Um, and on these particular vans, they're notorious for their drive shafts and associated stub shafts. So you've got two shafts that are sort of splined together. And even with factory output torque, they are renowned for shearing their splines um, and uh, requiring the drive shaft to be replaced. So given that none of these vans are getting any younger and the components in them will have some wear in them, um, I would think carefully about the benefits you will get relative to the potential costs of doing so. Um, and again, the other thing, just into, in the context of what we said previously with stopping distances, um, is thinking about what you're going to use the additional power for. If it's torque to get you up hills in a hilly area, great. Um, but remember, you have got a mass there to stop. So, hope you found that uh, useful and thought-provoking. As I say, we've got the link to the original video which shows a walk round of the habitation elements of this van. Got a couple of videos up of driving a standard factory tune um, 1.2 PS TDI. Um, and uh, good luck with spe specking your own van. Hope you find a good one and uh, enjoy it, drive it safely.